Right, so I wanted to start off by having you all introduce yourselves, uh, tell them what you do on the project, and then we're going to open up for uh, questions and answers. So we can just start right here. Okay. Um, I'm Christina Stair. I'm the assistant director and the editor of the film. Uh, I'm Mickey. I had nothing to do with the making of this film, and I claim no responsibility. <laughs> <laughs> I'm Julia Whitehead. I am the writer, producer, and director of the film, and the CEO and founder of Kurt Bonnie and Christine Weiser. And now I'd like to open up for questions if anybody has any. When do you sleep? <laughs> <laughs> People have asked me that question before, and I have a good answer for you. I get a lot done because A, I don't play golf, okay? And B, I don't watch professional football. Add up those hours, and there's plenty of time to do whatever I want to do. Uh, could you tell a little bit of the story of Snooki Hendricks or Sean's father? Well, of course, I didn't know Snooki. I, he, um, he loved uh, two things, women and drugs, and both of them got him into a lot of trouble. He fathered, uh, I don't know how many dozens of children and how many dozens of, of, uh, of uh, wives, but uh, not wives, but girlfriends. And one of them happened to be this young man who we talked to. Um, and it's tough growing up without a father figure in the house, isn't it? And so he kind of steered the wrong way for some time, uh, spent lots of time in prison. And um, Snooky was his father, but didn't give, didn't have time or the inclination to give uh, young Sean a lot of attention. And uh, it's no wonder that uh, he started out in the wrong way. Um, Snooky was uh, very smart, looked a lot like Sean. And uh, he even worked in the Luger administration when Luger was a mayor. But he was dealing drugs right out of the city county building. So, Snooky wasn't your best role model, and unfortunately for Sean, that's part of his problem. Can I add, yes, please. Um, also, Snooky was murdered, and his murder was never solved, and of all the ideas I've had about films, a film about Snooky Hendrix is uh, my favorite <laughs> idea. Yeah, okay. And you, I said? I'd be interested in uh, uh, what Nikki attributes his business acumen to. What were the underpinnings, the salvage yard, the father? What do you think it is? Well, you know, when um, you saw that piece about um, George Pillow, and I helped George uh, come um, mentoring George, and we talked a lot. We're good friends. And uh, I said, George, what did you talk about around your din dining room table? <gasps> Basketball. I went out and we, I played basketball, and he was a fine basketball player. I think he, I know he's in the Indiana Hall of Fame. He said, Mickey, what did you talk about? Well, we talked about my dad's day at the junkyard. We talked about capitalism. We talked about uh, eking out a living, uh, learning how to negotiate. So that stuff is, I learned as a kid, George was a good, fast study, but he didn't have that basic, uh, skill set that I developed as a child. And uh, so my entrepreneurial sense comes from two things. One, somehow, as I said in the movie, I have this inner feeling that I have more confidence than I deserve. Um, don't ask me why. I've done a lot of things. I said, oh, I can do this. Turned out I couldn't, but I found people who could help me do it. So that, that's one. And two is that early childhood training, very, very important. And then up there. Tell us about the Indianapolis Crossword Puzzle Workers Club that you created. <laughs> there was a, uh, Will Shorts' predecessor, Eugene Valeska, was a bit of a snob. And he was the New York Times Crossword Puzzle editor. And he wouldn't allow a puzzle to be published in his puzzle <laughs> section unless you had already been published in at least two or three other papers. And, um, had uh, credentials. And so uh, I had sent him a puzzle, and he, uh, what I thought was a good puzzle, first puzzle ever, and he said, he sent it back and said it, it was an amateurish, amateurish um, effort, and it contained a plethora of esoterica. 
I had to go to the dictionary and look up both of those words. <laughs> so we concocted a diabolical scheme to trick that man into allowing us to have a puzzle in his paper. We made up the Indianapolis Crossroad Puzzle Club, and we offered him a chance to come and speak to the club. Of course, there was no club. But he, he uh, took the bait, and uh, he would write back, okay, I'll come. Uh, how many people are in your club? And we had uh, somebody, that was the first letter we had somebody write as president. I had somebody else sign it as treasurer, um, and uh, making arrangements for him to come, and he'd write back, okay, the date's fine. By the way, how many people are in your club? And we never answered the question. So we had a little luncheon, and we advertise it in our papers, and, and the Indianapolis Star cooperated on the, in the fraud as well, and we had a good group come to see Eugene Maleska, and at the meeting of the club, he agreed to publish um, you know, the, one of our puzzles, and that's how he broke the ice. And he never knew to this day, he unfortunately passed away, he's a, a fine fellow after all, by the way, but he never knew that he was um, bamboozled. Yeah. <laughs> So I'm hearing the story for the first time. <laughs> you can imagine how often that happens with this guy. Okay. By the way, the gentleman who asked that question is our esteemed um, um, editor of the Indianapolis Business Journal, retired, and it's been an extraordinary privilege uh, for me to work uh, with him all, all these years. Uh, we have time for one more question. But we're having such a good time up here. I know. We have to continue the conversation outside after this. A film, another film coming. Uh, right there. What's your next book? Uh, 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 well, um, my first book was about the easiest book you can do. It's a picture book. Anybody can put pictures together. The second two were biographies, so all your material is right in front of you. The, the, ne the next book, the fourth one, was what my wife said, you're finally writing about something you know something about. That was business. Uh, the fifth one was a crossword puzzle book, which is a compilation of puzzles. The last one was a, a football book, which required a lot of research. So I, I, I wanted to illustrate that by saying I'm starting to take bigger and bigger risks with my writing. And so my next book, I think, is going to be fiction. First time uh, fiction. I'll probably fall flat on my face, but I'm going to give it a try. <laughs> and um, since this is the last question, would you help me thank our filmmakers here for making such a fabulous film? So, I actually got one more question for the filmmakers. Uh, what was the most challenging part about making the film? Do I have the first? So I've never made a film before, so pretty much the entire process was um, pretty challenging, um, to, you know, just to figure out what what to do. I guess it's that other filmmakers, many other filmmakers, have people they can get to go get the permissions for the music or go do this and go do that. And you know, we we really three of us. I mean, there are a number of other people mentioned in the the credits. There, you know, this person who maybe filmed one of the interviews or another interview, but it was really three of us and only three of us who were regularly working on this project with Christina being one of the three of us. And so I guess just having to do all of the work, um, which is, you know, like I said, not like <laughs> other filmmakers necessarily, and rounding up the money. Vonnegut Library is the, the uh, sponsor of this film. And, so, and we're still trying to cover the cost of the film. So joining the Vonnegut Library, vonnegutlibrary.org, is a great way to help support the, um, the cost of this film. I mean, we've done, we've done well. We had 21 out of 25 new donors to the Vonnegut Library. Um, but we still have a little, little ways to go to, to cover this. But wonderful project. One of the best things I've ever decided to do in my life, for certain. Um, similarly for me, it was my first time editing a feature-length film, so it's a lot more than I was expecting when we got into it, really. So that's probably the hardest part for me. Well, let's give another round of applause for everybody out here.